guys. So how many times have you bought an eyeshadow palette online on a whim, just looking at the picture and being like, that is so pretty, I need that. And then when you get it in your hands, you're just kind of like, you know what, I don't like this as much as I thought I would. So today I want to just kind of give you a bit of a checklist on things to think about before you press that purchase button, because there are so many things about eyeshadow palettes that makes us not like them, even though at first glance we think they're going to be perfect. So I want to just get into it. So I have 10 things on my list here and I want to share them with you all. And hopefully you find this helpful and you don't find yourself buying palettes that you don't end up using again. So these are going to be in no particular order. I have a list on my phone. I haven't really organized them, but the first thing on my list is how many shadows are in this palette and what kind of a size do you prefer in your eyeshadow palettes? Are you the kind of person who gets overwhelmed by having a lot of different options? Then maybe getting a big palette is not going to be perfect for you. I know for myself personally, I definitely prefer smaller palettes. I like to stay within like the 9 to 12 kind of range. That is where I feel the most creative, the most comfortable, and that's where I feel like I really have to think about what I'm doing with my eyeshadows, but I'm still not so overwhelmed that I have all the options in the world and I never think of something to do. So for me, I like smaller palettes. I know some people like to have bigger palettes. Some people really love the big Morphe palettes that have like 39 shades in it. For me, I just get overwhelmed when I look at that. I don't want to have all the options in the world because then I just end up scratching my head and I'm like, I could literally do anything. And I don't always want to be able to do everything with every palette that I own. So just kind of think about what your preference is before you end up buying something. Maybe it's something that's too small for you. Maybe a quad is not the best for you because you feel very restricted and it's not something that you know you're probably going to use. So maybe a quad is not going to be for you. Maybe a 39 pen palette isn't going to be for you. So before making a purchase, just sit down and think about which palettes do you reach for the most size-wise and then maybe start buying more of those kind of palettes if those are the ones that you use the most. So the second thing on my list is just know your color preferences. If you are someone who deep down knows that blue shadows do not look good on you, don't go out and buy the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette. Like you're probably just not going to use it despite seeing so many people using that palette and they love it it's probably still not going to be for you. So don't fall for the hype. If everybody is using a product that you know that you're not going to use, please don't buy it because you're probably not going to change your mind when you have the palette and you're going to end up regretting it. So just keep in mind your color preferences. If you are someone who prefers warm tones, don't buy a palette that has a bunch of cool tones because you're probably not going to use it. Just think about what it is that you actually like to wear, not what you wish you could wear or not what everyone else is wearing, but what you actually wear. And those are probably the shadows that you should be buying more of because you're going to get your values worth. The third thing I want to touch on is packaging. I know a lot of people don't really consider packaging before they do buy something if they're very inspired by the color story. And I can say that for myself included. I don't really care that much if the packaging is big and bulky. So I will probably buy something if I really like the colors that are inside of it. But if you are someone who hates bulky packaging, who don't know how to store it, who just get mad when you look at it and the packaging makes you not want to use the product, you probably should not buy that product even if it's something that you really like. Especially if you have a hard time storing it, if it's just going to be in your way, you know, if you're never going to reach for it, it's just going to end up in the bottom of your drawer because it doesn't fit anywhere else, maybe don't buy that product. And also I want to use this uh, Riviera palette as an example because if you are someone who is kind of OCD about things staying clean, you're probably going to be really annoyed at this because this is hard to clean if you get it dirty and that really goes with every Anastasia palette. And so maybe just let the packaging be the one thing that sort of sways you if you're you know, in the middle and you can't really make a decision. Maybe if the packaging is not something for you, maybe that is a product that you should skip this time around. Now, I feel like the next three points that I want to touch on are probably the most important when it comes to buying an eyeshadow palette. And so the first thing I want to mention is look at the ratio between the mattes and the shimmers and know what kind of formulas that you prefer to work with. Are you someone who really likes to build up a crease using like three or four different colors in your crease? Then you probably want to have a palette that has more mattes than shimmers in it. And if you are the opposite, maybe you are the kind of person who likes to do all shimmer looks a lot, then maybe you don't care that much if there aren't that many mattes in the palette. But just 
know beforehand what the palette really has. Don't look at the colors as a whole. Try to break it down when you're looking at Trend Mood or wherever you are looking at palettes. Maybe you're on Sephora's website. Really zoom in on the palette and make sure that you know which of the shadows are mattes and which are shimmers. And then think about how you would use those together and if that is a color story that inspires you. And so to take that into the fifth point, make sure you know how the matte colors are going to work with the shimmers because that is really what determines your end look. So I just want to use the Riviera palette as an example for this because I feel like this color story threw a lot of people off and not many people really analyzed this before they got it and then when they got it they felt a little bit stuck and restricted because of the mass versus the shimmer so if you take a look at this at first glance this palette looks so colorful you have some blues you have some purples you have some yellows you have pink you have everything you would need as a colorful palette right but then when you take a closer look and you really look at the mattes down here like if you cover up this first row and only look at the mattes all of the mattes are extremely neutral, except for the pink and the purple. So basically, if you are someone who only puts mattes in your crease, which is most people, let's be honest here, then you can really only go with the pink and purple together, or you can do a softer kind of pink look, or maybe a softer purple look, or you can do a neutral look with a brown. And so that's pretty restricting if you ask me, especially if you look at these shimmers in this palette. So basically, if you want to have a blue on your lid, you are stuck with either having a pink or a purple or a brown in your crease. So just something to keep in mind that you really look at the palette closely before you end up buying it and making sure that what you are putting in your crease is going to be something that you are happy putting with the shimmers on your lid. So I know a lot of people don't really analyze the palettes before they buy them. They see something colorful, they buy it, and they're very disappointed when they get it because they didn't really think it through before buying it. So just really zoom in on the palette when you are on the website before buying it and make sure that you think about what the looks are going to look like before you put them on your eyes, before you end up buying that palette. So my seventh point is basically if you know that the palette is not 100% perfect for you, but you still want to buy it with the intention of using it with other palettes, be honest with yourself and really ask yourself, am I the kind of person who will use this palette with another palette? A lot of people say all the time that, yeah, I'm going to use this palette with a different palette, but then you never see them using it with a different palette because they aren't really the kind of people who will pull in two different palettes to do a look with. So just be honest with yourself. If you are someone who don't usually use two palettes to do your makeup with, don't expect to start using that palette with another palette because let's be really, you probably will not be doing that. So, you know, just kind of think about it and don't tell yourself you're going to do something if you know you're not going to do it. And don't tell yourself that you're going to become that person who will use two palettes in your looks when you've never really done it before. So, you know, just be honest with yourself. And to kind of spin off on that, this is going to be point number eight. If you are someone who really likes to use different palettes when you do your makeup, maybe you should look into seeing if you can dupe the palette that you are looking at. Because if you are already pulling in different shadows from different palettes in your collection, there's a good chance that you probably have everything that you need in your palette collection already. And so you really could just like pull from the palettes that you already have to make similar looks that could already be created with the palette that you are lusting over. This is if you are trying to talk yourself out of buying something maybe you're on a low buy, maybe you just don't have a lot of money at the time that you want to spend on makeup, maybe try to dupe something. That's not something that I really care to do because I like to make videos with certain palettes so I'm not really a duper, but I know a lot of people are really into duping and you could also maybe look at some dupe videos online and see what other people are using to kind of create looks that are inspired by certain palettes. So just something to keep in mind if you aren't really looking to buy something but you see a palette that you really really like. So it's just kind of an option I wanted to throw that in there just if it's something that you haven't really thought about. So the next point I want to make is also very very important and this is if you are looking at this palette that you are lusting over that you see on trend mood all the time that you see on the Sephora app look at the palette and is this something that really inspires you? When you look at this palette, can you already see like four or five different looks that you already want to do without even having it in your hands? If the answer is yes, you're probably going to love this palette. If you're having a really hard time envisioning looks that you can do with this palette, imagine what it's going to be like when you have the palette in front of you. You're probably going to feel the same way. And if you're not really inspired by the palette, 
honestly, how often are you really going to be reaching for it? If you don't already have ideas of looks that you want to do with the palette, you're probably not going to force yourself to use it if you have other palettes that are just more inspiring. So just kind of think about that and make sure that when you do buy something, it's something that's really inspiring to you, something that makes you happy, something that makes you want to go do your makeup, something that makes you want to sit down and play and put eyeshadows on your eyes, because that is in the end how you want to feel when you look at an eyeshadow palette, especially for me, because if I'm not inspired by something, I'm just not going to buy it. I don't care how well the review is going to do, I don't care how many other people are going to love this palette. If I'm not inspired by it, I probably should not be buying it. And the last point is price. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory, but I feel like I had to throw it in here. So, you know, make sure that if it's something that's really expensive, are you going to get your money's worth? It's different if it's a very cheap palette. Maybe it's a ColourPop palette. You know what? It's fine. It's not that expensive. If you don't use it that many times, oh well, you know what? Like, you had fun with it while it lasted, and if you can afford it, like, who cares if you don't use it that many times? But if it's something that's really expensive and it's an investment for you, make sure that you know you're going to be getting a lot of use out of this palette because otherwise you're going to feel guilty. You don't want to feel guilty over makeup. You don't want things in your collection that you look at that makes you feel bad about your purchase if you don't end up using it. So those were all my 10 things on my list. Let me know if you found this helpful at all because I know for myself that it took a long time for me to kind of figure out what palettes inspire me, what palettes I should buy, which ones I should stay away from because there are so many out there, the market is so big and it's only getting bigger. So maybe next time before you buy that palette, just sit down, kind of have a little bit of a checklist, make sure that all of the things that are important to you are exactly what is in that palette. So that was all I wanted to share with this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and hopefully I will see you all in my next video. Bye.